This is Twit. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. ACI Learning's Cyber Skills is the newest training tool for employees, especially non-IT professionals. Flexible training covers everything from password security and phishing scams to malware prevention and network safety. Try it for yourself, then bring your team along. Fill out the form at go.acilearning.com slash twit for a free two-week trial. I want to be careful because the, the story about Zoom is an ongoing one. Um, historically, by the way, a few years ago, I think it was early pandemic. Um, I'm locating it by when, when it was in time. And I'm looking through all the too many tabs I have open here. Um, but I, I suddenly were getting 25,000 visits because I really busted them hard for their privacy policy, um, which basically, and it was really the one that applied to their website, which by the way, had almost nothing on it because it was all promotional. It was not, I mean, nobody went there for anything but a brochure basically, but on that they had pretty much the pro forma um, privacy policy that all lawyers trying to, to obey the letter of the GDPR while utterly messing with its spirit I'm euphemizing here. Um, um, and and they backtracked a lot on that. And apparently, and I had a long conversation with their CEO, Eric Wan, uh, who seemed like you want, I think, is, who seems like a really nice guy. Um, and, you know, sounded sincere about wanting to protect the privacy of its users and said that what they did in when you're using Zoom is very different than what they did with their website. They're going to fix the website. And I don't remember how that all came out, except they did change some things. Um, and he did change that privacy policy to um, something less onerous, if not non-onerous, I don't remember. Um, in this case, they're saying, I believe, and I can't find the open tab where they say it, it's an Axios story, um, uh, that that they, by default, they are not training AI on conversations that are happening over Zoom. And so I just invite listeners to go look that up because I don't have a link to it. And if we can find one, we'll put it in the show notes, but there is, I, I don't think they're being idle sitting there, but it's a tough one. I mean, right now, I don't know to what extent they're um, keeping up with the Joneses on this or just as so many companies are doing so many, everything are doing just relying on AI for everything they possibly can. That's it. I, I see uh, we have it up on screen now for those watching. Um, so I, I so maybe where we could go with it is this, uh, Dave and, and Dan, too. Um, in a world where more and more we are depending on AI to do our understanding for us, to comprehend our lives. Um, last week, I think we, uh, we were talking about music, as a matter of fact, on that show. And, um, uh, and, and, and that guest Damien real talked about how AI has been used and he uses AI in, uh, in, uh, in law and in the legal <clears throat> profession, all for good, I would say. Um, but I would love to apply AI to everything in this room and, you know, um, I, I show every, the spines of all those books and tell me what's in them. Uh, and who, you know, maybe cross cross-reference with all my receipts and see where, wh who I paid for what. There's so many ways I can improve my life or have my life improved if I had my own AI. Um, I think every company wants to improve what they do, um, but how can they, how, how much of this is keeping up with the Joneses? How much of it is actually needing this stuff? And how much is getting way out, getting the cart way out in front of the horses and and the world going to hell. And I'm just, so take that any, any direction you want. So you're asking me or, uh, I ask you both, I, but you're the, you're the guest. You go first. Okay. <laughs> it really makes my, my blood boil. Uh, honestly, I, um, let me give you an example. Um, someone asked chat GPT for about me, which is really cool. And it summarized my accomplishments from multiple places, which is pretty good. And then towards the end, it said, unfortunately, uh, Dave Tott died in 2020, <laughs> leaving behind a substantial body of work. It actually wrote that. So it's when it falls into fantasy and we are depending on this 
to, to I don't know, manage our uh, cars or our lives or our accountants or say, you know, by the way, if you combine these two chemicals, they won't kill you. You know, it, it needs to be truthful and it needs to be trained on data that is truthful. And honestly, if you're trolling the web for the last 14 years, you aren't going to find that. If I could find an AI that was, tra that was trained on, for example, the entire output of SciHub, you know, all the scientific papers of the world and then ha made to reject 20 percent that are completely wrong. And maybe, I don't know, 1980s Usenet um, and maybe a, a ton of other really great books that we know to be truthful. Um, then I would have a lot more confidence that we were going to move forward. Um, but right now, it seems to be just falling. That particular aspect of it uh, just makes my blood boil. You can't trust it. Uh, it's it I it, it. <laughs> so that's the first part. I love that it allows you to. It, it has improved my writing. I have a unique style that it improves. Uh, it has improved the coding in the Libre QoS project. Uh, it requires adult supervision. Um, so in moving back to the Zoom controversy, though, I wanted to make the stress on the floss side is that it's very hard to trust in third parties, and I would like us very much in the video conferencing world to get back control of our conferencing tools and allow us as the actual owner to have faith and trust that we aren't sharing information with parties we don't want to and uh, and train our own bloody models. You know, I, I don't want Siri, for example. I'd like my own personal assistant, you know, virtual name, say Athena, something like that, who I can trust with my secrets and uh, and help navigate a very difficult and complicated world for me. Maybe we'll get closer to that point with enough pushback. So, so one reason that um, I, I, why Siri is, I think, really, really dumb um, <laughs> is that it's actually not much trained on our data and is detached from any back back end, or at least they say it is. Um, uh, but, but I think, I, I mean, I, 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 this is my supposition, but I think it's, I think it's true that th the problem with chat GPT and for that matter, Bard, um, and I suppose Llama as well. Um, I don't know how it is trained. Bard is trained the same way is that it's looking at the entire internet since 1995. And, and, you know, there's so much that's wrong in there and it's, and it's making stuff up. I mean, I've been amazed at how I'm glad they got, got you wrong, except for the part where you died. Um, <laughs> Coming uh, to you from beyond the grave. I know, I know. It's like, yeah, rumors of my death are slightly exaggerated, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> or as uh, I, I think it was William Cowper said, um, you know, it, this, to a newspaper that reported his death, he said, "See if you reported my death, death, I will, I will cancel my subscription." <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. um, but um, you know, I, I, I'm I'm wondering well, two things. First is, what is your um, your uh, conferencing open source conferencing system or or approach of preference? Is it Jitsi or one of the others? Um, uh, and uh, we've had them on here before. Um, uh, and and what, I mean, have you played with Llama or any of the one, any of the open source AIs that, uh, I know Llama is a special case because it's it coming from Facebook and it does have some restrictions. It's not a wide open license, but you could do a lot with it. And so I'm wondering if on both those fronts, conferencing and AI, if you have any preferences. Hmm. Um, so I adopted Galen early in the, by the way, you absolutely should have the author of Galen uh, and maybe also the author is Julius Krobacek. Uh, and he's a, he speaks four languages. He's brilliant. He's entertaining. And uh, you should definitely have him on your show. He wrote it like most Floss software and anger and because Jitsi was so overcomplicated and he said, oh, I can do this better. And then he, 
started developing it, did it for his own courses, and it's been more and more adopted around the world. Uh, the Pion library it depends upon uh, is was one of the better congestion control algorithms in the world. And the Pion library got adopted by Twitch. So th through that wonderful seed crystal of what went into Galene, we have a lower latency video conferencing system. It's all open source that a normal person can, start, can build in about 10 minutes uh and, and deploy like i could get it you could you know i could get it running for you doc in your basement in 10 minutes and you suddenly would be running your own code um there's a couple other open source um conferencing systems besides jitsi uh there's another one i gotta say right now i'm really just fond of where galene is and where it's going uh what was your other question doc you had a second one Oh, uh, and, uh, your preferred AI, I mean, the, the video conference ah, is one, but AI is the other. AI. Is there an AI you're um, using privately, <laughs> I mean, on, on your own? Yeah. So I do hope that the future is you have your own private AI uh, and that it digests your data and just your data and has a good data set. So, no, I am, after a brief, very sexy exploration and curiosity exploring this stuff, I had my Alvin Toffler mo moment. Um, you read Future Shock. Um, you've heard you've heard the term, I'm sure. But remember oh Future yeah, Shock? sure, yeah. Uh, yeah, written about him. I, He's sadly yeah. gone, but yeah. I, I I got so fed up in, in this potential future that I just got on the next plane to Nicaragua and logged out. You know, <laughs> but I put my phone down, grabbed my guitar, sat on a beach, and I figured I would watch the singularity happen from a safe distance. <laughs> <laughs>